What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, reviewing today Dragon's Crown Pro. This console generation, we've seen a ton of remasters. More than anything, I feel like that that's what this era is going to be remembered for. Finding great games of the past and bringing them forward with a fresh coat of paint. This game though is already pretty modern. The original Dragon's Crown came out in 2013 for the PS3 and PlayStation Vita and it was well loved. This updated version doesn't really add much, but it does do enough that I feel like it's definitely worth revisiting. For those who have never tried this game, it is basically a 2D version of Diablo. A game where you and some friends team up, beat up some monsters, and just kind of go around trying to find the best gear possible. However, it's not about actually beating the quests, it's more about just having the fun along the way. For the pro version that's being re-released here, the biggest difference is the crazy new art. It seems like they've taken the original scans, the original pieces of this hand-drawn art, and made it all the more in-depth. Every single character looks almost like a painting, and I have to say, this sharper visual really actually helps the combat to a massive degree. So, as you can see, in a general fight, it is pure and utter insanity. There's usually going to be you, plus three teammates, and anywhere between 20 freaking enemies on the screen at once. So seeing what's going on requires a sharp eye. Now, it seems like this redone graphical style has actually created a lot more color depth. It's a lot easier to be able to decipher exactly where I'm at and where my teammates are and what spell we need to unleash to keep being alive. This is a huge help, and I found myself actually being able to keep track of my own combos and my own characters a lot more easily. That was my biggest problem when I originally played this back on the PS Vita is I would get lost just trying to do a typical boss fight, especially some of the bigger fights. The other major difference from the pro version is they've completely remastered the entire soundtrack, making it all done with a live orchestra. You can switch it back and forth, but personally, I feel like this new soundtrack is really, really cool. It makes it almost feel like I'm marching along in some awesome lost chapter of Lord of the Rings, where every single motion I'm making has this drum beat and violins and flutes, each making the perfect punctuation for my next hit. Now, I do want to warn you that if you've never played Dragon's Crown before, or you've never even seen gameplay of it, it's definitely one of those things that you have to play a couple hours for it to finally click. At the start, it can seem like it's overly simplistic. Each of the different hero classes basically plays in a very unique fashion, with warriors being able to throw out tornadoes, archers having to shoot arrows that they have to then pick up, or my personal favorite, the dwarf warrior who can smash anybody with his hammer and has special moves that make him put down his weapon and shoot lightning out of his hands. All of that is fantastic, but you sort of need to try and pick up the controller yourself in order to fully grasp it. In a way, it really does feel like Diablo to me, because while that game only has a couple buttons, each one can be customized into how you want to use it. While it's true that I may only be pressing square to hit my enemies, there's a lot of different varieties on how I can use that one button. If I press up square, I can throw an enemy straight up in the air, that way I can catch them and do a downward slam combo. If I jump up in the air and press down twice and then square, I can do a drill attack that It'll screw anybody on the ground beneath me, along with stuff like holding square to empower my character to do a nice super attack and armor himself. Even though these controls themselves seem quite simplistic since you really just have two main attacks, it all feels so much better because as you go along, you keep learning new tricks. The game doesn't really try and explain stuff to you, instead expecting you to work together with your teammates to try and figure out how you can fight best. This really begins to shine through at its absolute brightest when you are doing online co-op. 
This is completely what the game was made for, and I have to say it's genuinely addictive to try and get thrown into matches with random people. After a certain point in the game, you can turn on online matchmaking, which just lets you go into a random dungeon that somebody is in. So if somebody's already built out their party with a bunch of NPCs or computer controlled characters, you fill the spot of one of their party members, getting to be whatever role they need. Now, this is so fun because you end up just trying to adapt into whatever situation is going on. At one point, just a little bit ago today, I was playing it and suddenly we ended up in a cave with a huge kraken trying to sink a pirate ship that we were on. So here we are totally panicking, trying to figure out how to stop it because not only is the kraken hurting us, he's ripping apart our ship, trying to tip it over and the game keeps warning us, hey, you're totally about to get screwed if you don't stop him. That's when we discovered that you could pick up a torch and actually light these cannons on the deck to deal massive damage. But here's the thing, only the party leader had thought to bring a torch into the fight. So while he was running around trying to light each of the cannons and blast him away, we were all trying to just punch the Kraken itself to hit all these tentacles and make us all live the tiniest bit longer. It was extremely thrilling and honestly, I was grinning from ear to ear because I had no idea what to expect. This fight was so deep and so riveting and really I didn't even see it coming. This is the true pride and joy of Dragon's Crown Pro. It's not so much about the story which is a little bit cheesy, it's about going on adventures. It's about trying to upgrade your gear and enchant your items and figure out that next big spell. However, I will say that there is a pretty large downside of this game which is that it can be short. The main plot itself can be finished in about 12 hours, and while that is really fun, eventually the only thing you can do is go back and replay the maps you've already done. These dungeons basically get extra quests and extra routes that you can go through, but eventually, after about 30 hours, you've seen everything. However, there are a lot more levels to gain. Actually getting to level 99 and maxing out your strength can take anywhere from 60 to 80 hours and that's just counting as one character there are tons of different classes to play i will say that this is one of those games that is best played with other people even if you're not able to speak the same language because a lot of the people i was playing with were over in japan and still it was an absolute thrill ride it wasn't about being able to talk or communicate so much as it was about having other people strategically help me take down incredibly powerful incredibly dead enemies. Even after putting so many hours into this remake, I still was having a blast, and I do think that it was a really smart choice for them to make everything in this game crossplay. What I mean is, if you own the PlayStation 3 version, the PlayStation Vita version, or this new PlayStation 4 version, they all play on the same servers. This was such a wise choice because it makes it very easy to at any time of any day you can instantly build a party and always have somebody new in your group ready to go into that next big fight. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Dragon's Crown Pro an 8.5 out of 10. Projects like this don't come along very often. Something that's so stylized, so deep, and honestly so perfect in what it strives to do. So really, if you're interested in this, I do encourage you to buy it. Support this kind of art and hopefully we'll see more games that are this dang unique. Thanks so much for watching gamers, this has been Dreamcast Guy with another review. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm gonna make it a point not to talk about how weird the characters look, because some of them, uh, yeah. I mean, let's face it, this mermaid has a butt. I don't really know how, but there you are. Look, I'm gonna zoom in. Like for the mermaid butt. Oh, hey, I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.